The following podcast contains language and themes that some people may find offensive. There is also talk about New York. I love New York. Hey, I'm walking here. Forget about it. Dead ass, I'm hyped. Now that's facts. My bad. I didn't see you down there. You bugging? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Welcome to That Was The Week That Was, was it? The podcast that enjoys the finer things in life. Like uh, YouTube videos about people unboxing old fruit or something. I don't know. I'm Alex Sivright and joining me for this episode is Emmy Weber. Hello, Emmy. Hello, Alex. How are you? I'm good. I'm fine. I'm too close to you right now. We are very, I very guess I married together. you and that's what I signed up for. Yeah, this is, this is, this is good times for me. Um, well, our guest for this episode is uh, one of the most prolific comedy producers in the UK. He's produced such comedy classics as Coogan's Run, Dinner Ladies, Cabin Pressure, and uh, something called Cold Case Crime Cuts. I've never heard of that. It's David Tyler. Hello, David. Uh, hello. And and before the real producer of Cold Case Crime Cuts, John Holmes, uh, jump, stands on a chair to try and punch me, I ought to mention I was the executive producer. No. He does have to stand on a chair. Uh, no, yeah, I'm so not, I'm sort not... of give, given with one hand and taken away with the other there. Sorry, John. Okay, so you executive, executively produce. <laughs> yeah, I, I sat in a chair and smoked big cigars. Yeah. Oh, you were that guy? I see. Yeah. Hey, okay. <laughs> How are you, David? Uh, fine, very well, yes. Um, it's been a busy week, which is a good thing, right? Yes, <laughs> it is. We have actually delayed this podcast until you had an interesting week. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so what I can tell you about it, or yeah, if you like, please. Or I could, I'll go just has... unfurl this flip chart to be actually pointless on audio. <laughs> uh, well, well, it's weird. So, so the the basic thing is, I never go away or go on holiday or anything because I can't be asked. Mm. Uh, but I happened by by dint of a historical family accident, went to New York. Oh, uh, so I'm so the caveat is that I don't travel, and it's not I'm not sort of going. Yeah, I know I went to New York actually. Oh, yeah, it, it's just sort of random occurrence. Uh, so if we're doing literally the week, uh, literally Sunday a week ago, yep, I was standing in the Guggenheim Museum. Wow. Uh, which is very splendid and has fabulous art, but also is great fun to run around in circles like an idiot. I don't know if anyone listening knows about it. No, I, do you know what? I've never done that, but that uh, sounds Well, it's, a, it's, an ex, it's a museum built, built like a big spiral toilet. Um. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not an architect, uh, but it was a sort of prestige project, I think, built by these philanthropists called the Guggenheims, and it's it's in a spiral, uh, and you literally start at the top and and you sort of walk around in a big circle, and it was built by Frank Lloyd Wright. I mean, it's the real deal. It's extraordinary. Yeah, nice. Uh, but and but from the outside, if you're feeling babyish, it looks like a toilet, and I, my default setting is babyish. So there you go. <laughs> So How long was, did you stand outside pointing at it and laughing? Uh, until the police moved me on, obviously. Oh, they're very, yeah. they're very strict about that kind of thing they're in used New York. To that. They're used to it. <laughs> so it, that was that was very splendid. If you happen to like Kandinsky, who I do. Is it like a big spiral wheelchair ramp then? Yeah, it's 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 the most <laughs> it's the most perfect place if you're a wheelchair user. It's yeah. because it, it's all access. Uh, you it. never you never stop being able to get to it. Um, but it's 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 uh, wonderful. So we did that, and then because uh, we were just doing the big things, we were just doing what do you do in New York? You go to a museum, and then you have a bagel. Vague. Although actually, the bagel place had such a long queue, we had to run, we had to leave, oh. uh, which isn't very new. And then we went to the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island on a boat. Of course. Um, and that is was... it? Is it? Did, did you feel? wonder and splendor or was it did you feel a little bit deflated uh no it's it's ridiculously good you sort of chug along on this boat and it said it was absolutely schwitzing and it was and, and it was it was really nice and that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you think yeah okay i'm impressed mm. uh okay. and and also it was a gift from the french so obviously that makes me laugh yes um, of course. i suppose they were making a run they were it was sort of it's kind of trolling the english isn't it <laughs> Because it's yeah. sort of going, yeah, we had a revolution, you had a revolution, yeah, chew on that, guys. Yeah, um, which had never occurred to me before, but it's it's top trolling, really, in in sort of steel form, <laughs> uh, copper or whatever it is. Uh, and then we went to, you go to this place called Ellis Island, so I don't know if anyone knows about it, but it basically was where every immigrant to America came. Something like 20 million people passed mm. through it. It's a processing centre. 
Um, but unlike a sort of pretty Patel style processing center where they punch you in the face and throw you back in the water, uh, the the point of this was to sort of broadly let you in because they that was what America was based on, I guess. Yeah. Um, so they've done it up as a big museum, uh, and but it is the actual place. So it's it's it, well eerie and evocative because it's sort of it's like most people got in. Uh, mm-hmm. and then went on to become America, and you'll see them on the credits of every sitcom you'll ever watch, mm-hmm. uh, their descendants thereof, but but some didn't. And and there's a really weird thing that happens, so it's it's very uh, it's very evocative. And, and then it tell and they, they process everyone, and it's sort of humane and inhumane at the same time. And what they weren't allowing was people who were terminally ill or congenitally short-sighted, and they and they ch- make chalk marks on the people's coats because oh. it was a very polyglot place. And they chalk an E for eyesight on your coat if you need to go for further assessment rather than just being allowed in. Wow. And, uh, and you think, oh, that's quite weird. And also, if, if you uh, had, well, they wouldn't have called it mental health problems in those days. They would have called it defective or something. Anyway, so that's all weird and interesting and moving and blah blah um and there's eye tests in different languages which made me laugh a lot uh because mm. because i think the eye test charts are very funny you know the, all the eye test jokes oh yes you know, the, the, the the polish guy who who's is having an eye test and the guy says and the optician says um can you read that and he says read it i know the fella <laughs> <laughs> which is one of my favorite eye test jokes That's anyway cool. so randomly yesterday i was talking to my mum and she mentioned that her Completely out of the blue. Uh, I've known my mum by definition my whole life. Mm -hmm. Completely out of the blue. uh, She mentioned that her grandmother, a woman called Shaina Vodakov, she came from Poland and she went over the boats and she got to Ellis Island and she was rejected. Oh. She had the E chalked on her coat or whatever. And was dumped, and you're sent back, but she was dumped in London. Uh, Hence, therefore, sometime later, me and this podcast. So... Yeah. Weirdly, uh, I could have been producing American sitcoms. Damn, wow. I could have been producing wow. uh, Brooklyn Thing Thing Thing. Damn. Damn. So <laughs> if it wasn't for Shane of Vodakov's <laughs> eyesight in eighteen ninety, whatever the hell it was, oh. yeah. um, so that it was, was weird. Their, it was all their fault. <laughs> yeah, that what was. Did that the was... people who were allowed in? What did they get chalked on them? Uh, well, presumably nothing, or, or okay, or a thumbs up, or a. Um, but it was it was and then and then they just dispersed to all over america they you know they they just sort of get there and then get on a train to st louis and start working in you know st louis wow. and that that's how america worked or works crazy or works. isn't it that's crazy. Um, so that was exciting yeah kind um, of land yeah the, re- the reason why i asked if you were in any way disappointed with it um is because when we went to mount rushmore which is weird, though. It is weird. That but is we weird, were very disappointed in Mount Rushmore. Well, I didn't have high expectations of Mount no. Rushmore, but I think when we got there, we just it overwhelmed with the, no, this is odd. And so American, and I don't odd. know why it's and here. strangely small. It is very small. It's smaller <laughs> it's, than you think. It's actually yeah. the size of a shoebox. It's, yeah. It's, Was it, is it, is it, it in... Yeah, there's a giant magnifying <laughs> glass in front of it. Is it, is it in North... Dakota is it uh, South Dakota South Dakota because yeah. uh, presumably there's there's bugger all reason to go to Dakota any I, any of the Dakotas well at all you, sure. you found reason. we went because I have a thing for Wild West and things like that and I want and I wanted to go to Deadwood which is in South Dakota all right. so that's why we thought well while we're here let's check in on Mount Rushmore and we were more interested in because you could you could go on a path around and underneath it and then look at the really small faces from slightly closer. Um, but they had like these really cool mountain goats and chipmunks and things. So we were just more interested in the wildlife. Yeah. <laughs> and to it was so to difficult trying to get a selfie because one of our heads kept blocking. We're, we're terrible at selfies, we discovered. And we've got about five photos <laughs> where one of us is blocking... <laughs> At least some of the faces. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Because the selfie, I mean, you, you want your face in a selfie. Yes. But you want it, them it, in there as well. Otherwise, like, there's us at Mount Rushmore. Like, well, where is it? Yeah. It's behind the <laughs> hat. You can, tiny <laughs> thing. Just see Washington's left ear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's gone. Yeah. Oh, no. I've, uh, I've never been there. My, my, my sister did a project for some reason. She, she's an artist. She did a project on, on the construction of 
the whole Mount Rushmore thing. Um, but being family, I, I just sort of, when she was telling me about it, I just zoned out, mm-hmm. obviously. Mm-hmm. So so I, I actually know nothing about it. Yeah. Well, Other than they were going to put Trump up there. Not too far from there is um, Crazy Horse, which is uh, it's done by um, uh, the indigenous people who have just been blowing away for years and years and years, and they're never going to complete it because they won't take they won't take any funding from government or anything like that. It's just their project, and at least it's a bit more um, sentimental and it means something. It, it's it's of Crazy Horse, who's from the tribes from there, and um, that one's pretty cool. Yeah, it's bigger as well. Is so bigger. that's 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 crazy horse carved into a mountain. Yeah. yeah, and he's he's meant to be on the back of a horse, and he's pointing, and they've only got so far <laughs> as like carve a horse out of a mountain. The they've they haven't even touched on the horse yet. No, and this thing's been going for like probably nearly a hundred years or more. I, I I don't know. I can't remember the actual full history, but it's been going for a long wow. time. I mean, to be to be fair, mountains. I think uh, it's a category of object of which it is quite hard to carve. Mm. Isn't it? That's that's yeah. quite a big under. You know, it's, you're not. It's quite a big undertaking, is it not? Yeah, you're not carving. chipping away with a little. No, there's carving. dynamite involved, and yeah. it seems quite specialist. They're probably <laughs> regretting starting it. I think, so. it. <laughs> I think so. it's sentimental, but yeah, they're like bloody hell. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you could have started something simple. Better. At least it supports native peoples when you go there, and the, the money goes towards them. That's it. Yeah, but they're only spaffered away on chisels, aren't they? <laughs> just some more dynamite. Yeah, we yeah. need to, we need more dynamite. On principle, they finish theirs. We need to finish ours. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so that was that was your Sunday, was it? Uh, I think so. I can't remember what I probably fell asleep. No, what happened you Sunday night? So, uh, oh, we I'm went to the, the worst rest. Oh, we went to the worst restaurant in the world. Yes, that's right. <laughs> really? It had, it had been recommended by a friend of my son's, and. Um, it, it because it had a piano bar. He said that would be fun. <laughs> so we went in, and, and there was someone, get them here. <laughs> somebody smacking away at the keys like so loudly. Um, mm. So so it was like so there was no possibility of any conversation. Uh, and also it was one of those things like you know when the sensor sound engineers you know when they do a room they they tune out various frequencies because it's so resonant at certain frequencies. Nobody obviously was doing that. So there were certain notes that just really zinged off the roof. <laughs> Oh dear! Um, but it was also incredibly dark, uh, so it was in. It was sort of like an ordinary, sort of sensory deprivation restaurant. It turned yeah. out certainly de- deprivation in terms of taste, because oh, I mean, it was ostensibly Italian, but right, I mean, it's not contentious, is it? To say that American food is by and large absolutely dreadful in every um, regard. No, that's a that's a fair that's it's, a fair comment. I it's, mean, it's. When you when you when we go there, we do go there for bad food. We, we go there. We don't go there food. for good food. We go there. We we want to try the crap. Well, I mean, if you if you you know if you say okay, I'm going to have a typical burger, and then you, you know, and you you eat it, and you go, okay, I've done that. I, I yeah. feel yes. hollow and and worthless and miserable, but at least it was genuine. Absolutely. Yeah. But but they'll do. <laughs> it's like it seems to me the American. I'm sure they've got fancy restaurants, but the American paradigm is make a thing and then offer lots more things to put on top. Yeah. And and this happened to me the first time I, I went there. I did actually go 10, ten years ago. And we ordered a pizza, a, no, a, 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 no, a salad or something. And, and on the topping, it said uh, you could add chicken for $10 or something. So I said, oh, I'll have some chicken on top. Uh, and they bought a chicken and put it on top. Uh, of course. Um, and it's yeah, like I, I, sort of, I was sort of trying to explain that, but... But if the chef has created a meal that is the right combination of taste and balanced ingredients and so on, <laughs> it it's an admission that it's no good if you say, or you could whap a load of chicken on it. A whole chicken? What's yeah, that with an extra everywhere? Just like, do you want, to, do you want chicken on that? And yeah, or, or like shrimp. Add shrimp for $10. And you, th- yeah. you think what subtle blend of tastes and culinary, you know, sort of combinations has been evinced that then could also have some shrimp? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Um, so that I was mean, that was awful. Yeah, I, I agree with you. You do you do <laughs> add crap to it. We had um, a place called Cherry Cricket in Denver. Same holiday. Um, we had a. I had a burger which was called a Goober Burger, which had uh, fried egg on it and peanut butter. Right. Well, it's been delightful talking to you both. Uh, I'm just <laughs> going to go and throw up somewhere. <laughs> 
He really oh, liked no. it. I loved it. It was great. It was that yeah, bizarre you, sort of. Yeah, you loved it, but not not really. That you loved it as a thing. <laughs> Didn't you to, to have said that I you've done? Experience. We haven't like made one or craved it since. No, <laughs> that that's the point. Have have you made one since? No, I no, haven't like gone. Not. Yeah, I need that again. Uh, all... <laughs> What's the recipe? Yeah, and afterwards we had a deep fried cheesecake as well. Jeez. That was pretty good. <laughs> so so, but what you really had was sort of calorific anecdotes. Oh yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Not, not actually then. food. Yeah, that's what we per had. Se. Yeah. Indigestion. Yeah. Well, have you ever heard of the program Man vs. Food? I, I've, you know, when when you can't sleep and you get bored of watching Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares, yes, you yeah. do occasionally flick yeah. past it on the way up and on the yes. way back down again. That's the one. Um, uh, well, we went to three places that were on Man vs. Food in two days. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That was... <sighs> we couldn't finish any... No, but, so I'm surprised yeah. you could start, to be honest. Yeah, I'm surprised we're let back on the plane. <laughs> So yeah, that was that was that was a that was a bit of a fair and... deprivation restaurant essentially with a, someone playing the piano really loudly. And and then I had to sort of you know use the t- uh, torch on my phone to look at the menu, <laughs> and then suddenly you know and suddenly you feel about one hundred and seven, and it's yeah. all very dispiriting. And it, it led to it led it led to some words back in the hotel, shall we say? Oh. What, um, what what were you eating? Uh, you know? Well, it, it was an Italian restaurant. You know, pasta and pizza. So I had sausages in in with peppers. Okay. Because I because I thought because I was looking at the other at the pasta and so on and the sauces and I thought this this just looks all shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought, well, I'll have some Italian sausage. That that that's quite nice. That'll be all right. And I like the peppers. Well, and they can't mess it up, can they? And and it was execrable. I mean, it was it, first of all they were sort of soft. They were sort of you know sausages you can eat with just your tongue. Oh, yes. You know, right? you don't need teeth. So that's dispiriting. And then it was in sort of gravy that didn't bear any relation to the peppers. And I, I mean, I, I, what what was even, I don't know. So so that was, yeah, I've had I've had better meals. That's, that's a real shame. That is a real yeah. shame. So it's, that was, uh, that, so that it, polished off Sunday with, with a sort of bout of, mm. like, I don't mind get, taking a Gaviscon. I'm happy to take a Gaviscon, but I feel it should have earned. <laughs> you know, it should, it should be earned. Yeah, Do you know what I mean. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So, Monday was that just recovering, or what was that? Um, well, Monday we were flying in the evening, so we so there was a lot of sort of logistics to do. But then we we went to the Metropolitan Museum and whatnot, the Met, uh, mm-hmm. not whatnot, the Met, which is for those who for those who don't know New York. <laughs> no, for those who don't know, it's it's sort of imagine the British Museum and the National Gallery and and the and the Everything Else Museum, sort of. Up, upsized, supersized. Yeah. It's extraordinary. I mean, it's fantastic. It's brilliant, and and you could just sort of live there for a day. And we had about a couple of hours because we just thought we've got to sit. And and it's just insane because you know even the art alone, you're sort of going, oh, there's Mondrian, there's a Pissarro, oh, there's a Cezanne, there's a Gauguin, and this is oh, there's some Degas, oh, there's Rodin's The Thinker. I mean, it's just insane um, yeah. and wonderful. Uh, and my my son is quite a, a he he sort of likes to sort of complete things, you know, he sort of wanted to see. So he he got very exercised by the fact you couldn't really see it all in two hours. And there were lots of sort of WhatsApp messages going between the three of us. I was there with my son, Rudolf. Uh, sort of, oh, we're in, eight, we're in 831. What you, oh, I'm in 427. <laughs> you know, so just to give you some sense of scale of the place. <laughs> uh, I'm just by the Fabergé eggs. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm just up by the Venus de Milo. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> We'll meet you at the Warhol soup cans. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's good that. that, I mean, you couldn't do that like, I don't know, 10 years ago. You, you, need, you need the technology now to actually split up and meet up safely. Yeah, um, I, I, I love a good logistics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It I'm, reminds I'm, me of similar, actually, when we were, was it the Imperial War Museum? Well, they had the Holocaust uh, exhibit. Oh, yeah. Very, very good. Um, but haunting, horrible. Um, and there was someone on the phone there trying to meet up with someone else. It, it just, yeah, yeah, I'm just in uh, the Auschwitz bit. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not scary. No, nothing happened. Oh. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's not no, their yeah. best. They're, they're not the best <laughs> the best trip there. Oh, dear. No. You know the famous Monty Python story about, well, about Dachau, to, no. which is, oh, they were so in, uh, you can visit Dachau, which actually wasn't an extermination camp for... 
for fans of true knowledge, it was uh, a sort of camp for political prisoners of people who died there in profusion, but it wasn't actually an extermination camp. Uh, and it was just, it's just outside Munich, so they do run buses to there, but they're a little bit, uh, you know, obviously the Germans are a little bit sort of shifty about it. You know, they, they, mm. they've been wonderfully apologetic, and, but they sort of, you know, it's not the kind of thing you really want to make a big deal of it. And the Pythons were touring Germany, mm. um, and uh, they were, so they, this was deep part of the tour outside Munich, so they got on the bus, but they left it a bit late. And they got there and at about sort of five o'clock, and the person outside said, I'm sorry, we're closing. You can't come in. And Graham Chapman said, tell him we're Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Which makes me laugh a lot. I Particularly, Chapman it. was easily the most anarchic of them all. Clearly. By a long stretch. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. Now, the, first, the first thing that I had in mind when you said Pythons and when we mentioned Auschwitz was the, is it the women's institution um, reenactment? Oh, the... The, um, the oh, atrocities. yeah, where they where they reenact camp on Blood Island. Yes, yeah. is it that one? Yeah, is it the Batley and Spen Women's Guild or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and there's also the North Minehead by election sketch where the Nazis stand and they pretend oh, yeah, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Hilter. Yeah, um, yes. And all. yes. Is it is it Ulfra Kuhn or North Minehead by election or something? It's very God, I'd forgotten that. Well, um, I'll dig that one out later. Like the first series. I think it? that is the first series. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, nice. yeah, class. Um, so you say you had a you had a flight to get. To so we flew back Monday night, uh, yeah. and then that was all right. Um, and then a uh, bit jealous. Tuesday was just busy work catching up stuff because I had to go to Edinburgh on Thursday. Mm. So there was a lot of faffage and sorting things out, and more planes yeah. and so on. And uh, how and, much and, advance warning did you get on that? Uh, well, not not much. It was just various meetings and stuff had come up. Yeah. So, so I thought, because I, I can't imagine just like dropping everything and going to Edinburgh. Um, well, it wasn't no. it wasn't there very long. Uh, no. But no. it was it was sort of it was sort of had to be done. But I was very jet lagged, and and so we were, so I, I didn't sleep on the plane going over. You're, the idea is you leave at night and then you, and you fly yeah. through the night and then it's suddenly morning. But you should have slept three or four hours. But yeah. I, I in the end simply watched Dunkirk for the second yeah. time. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm the same, David. I, I, I've we've flown back at night and I've never slept, never slept on it. I've always watched. The last one I think I watched on a flight was Saving Mr. Banks. And you're watching that when you're completely delirious. It's. <laughs> uh, I'm much yeah. watching Dunkirk actually when you're feeling very tired. It's, yeah, a, it's a difficult one. Yeah, I don't know why I picked that. I've seen and I've seen it before, and it's very. I think it's a magnificent film, but um, but odd to be watching on a plane, particularly the dogfights. Yes. Um, yeah. And the, the planes running out of fuel and yeah. jittering. And it's I mean, quite... they, had, they had Sully on yeah. our flight. Yeah. Uh, which was bizarre. The, mm. the Tom Hanks crashing into the Hudson River one. You know. But everyone's just watched the best bits of that on YouTube anyway, haven't they? Yes, so, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. there's yeah. four good bits. Someone, uh, there was a podcast I listened to the other day where they had a really great joke at the beginning. And they said, this podcast is going to be the equivalent of the film Flight. Because you've got the best scene at the beginning, and that's it. <laughs> We haven't well, was, quite reached our peak yet, but yeah. So, so Tuesday was a bit of a blur because I was sort of trying to play through and not go yeah. to bed too early. So I think I think mainly what I did was was just look at all the receipts and cry a bit. Um, <laughs> I can take mainly, a day. Mainly what I was doing Tuesday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, now this week has been the, with the week of the knee as well. So Wednesday, I missed my knee appointment. Uh, so okay. The week of the knee. Now my my knee my knee was hurting. I had a shot. Oh, I knee. see. Okay. Um, no, no, not the other song, my knee. Uh, no, it was, um, so I booked to see the doctor at nine for, oh, oh, that's right. Oh yeah. I've forgotten. <laughs> so I was going to see the doctor. This, I, I promise you, this isn't as dull as it sounds, although maybe. That's fine. We've had worse. Oh, I, 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 I was booked to see the doctor on Friday because my knee had been hurting. And then I thought, I'll oh, bugger this when I go. So I'm going to ring as soon as I land on Tuesday morning and and see if they can bump the appointment up a bit. So uh, we got off the plane, got into baggage reclaim at 9.20. At 11.44, I became, I was no longer number 30 in the queue. I was number one in the queue and spoke to the GP. Oh. Having okay. sent near Harry, having sent my kids, you, you get off to the Piccadilly line saying, I'm going to be an hour and a half on the phone holding, but I've committed now. Because yes. I'm a man, and I've committed. I've committed to this phone call. It's the sunk cost fall fallacy. I'm not going to hang up. 
Um, so that, so actually, that's what I did. I got off the plane having not slept and stood for an hour and a half by in in uh, Heathrow. Wow, being number twenty six in the queue, etc. Uh, and and while running around looking for a phone charge outlet, because my phone was running down, because I was on the phone for an hour and a half. Wow, um, I mean, that was good. That's that was, dicey, isn't it? That's really like edge of your seat. That was, that was it, it. It was because actually, then I found a charger, and then the little bar was going down and going up. Oh my god! Because oh. it was it was getting goodness from the mains. It was getting good, you know, good electrons from the mains, but they were being used again to power the phone call, and it was a race. It was, it was more exciting than Dunkirk, I'll be honest. It's just, it's all numbers as well. It's like you're 26 in the queue, but you're also 15% on your phone. And it's oh, like, 50%, mm -hmm. I'd have been thrilled. Yeah. No, it was getting to the bit where it turns red. Yeah, we had it on the sat-nav yesterday. We had it on the sat-nav yesterday. My battery was, well, the, the sat-nav just went black, and I was like, mm. oh, so close to home. But because we're staying at my aunt and uncle's, I, I wasn't quite sure of the route from where we were. And we were so close, and then the screen went black, and but it still kept talking. Well, and it was well you've driven into a coal mine. Is the other possibility, I suppose? Yes, <laughs> yes, or eat an Italian dish. But yes, it was <laughs> a very, uh, a very yeah, imagine how stressful that can be. But I was, I rang the GP actually the other day, and uh, I was number one for about twenty minutes. Oh. <laughs> which, which either suggests they don't really have a system in place. Mm. Oh, well, the other bloke was really ill. Yes, that's what I was had what a thinking. lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Or you just went, oh, just give me a minute. I just need to check my sample, and then just yeah. Or, or, may, or maybe they were a they were a salesman for a phone queuing company. Maybe and say, okay, I can see your system isn't working. Let me let me pitch you a better one. And it took yes. twenty minutes to pitch. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, that could be it. That could be it. <laughs> I may mean, um, never know. That's the problem, David. I may never know. Well, the receptionist <laughs> just left you hanging because didn't that's like what me. doctor's receptionist I did. think that's like, what it is. Yeah. Someone's there. They can wait. And it was yeah. in the afternoon. It wasn't, like first thing. it wasn't first thing in the morning. It was yeah. the morning. Jeremy, Jeremy Hardy used to call them border guards. Yes. But actually, no, I said <laughs> the, the ones at my surgery, okay, I, I wish to have it put on record that they're splendid and helpful and delightful. Oh, good. Oh, um, mine were eventually, yeah. Um, <laughs> completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, was there anything else of note on Tuesday? Was it literally just? I st brain? No, I mean, I stayed awake basically, which which I'm oh. so proud of because the temptation to go to bed about four in the afternoon, and you, you know that's going to go tits up. You know, yeah. You're going to wake yeah. up at two in the morning. So I I played through. I managed to get through to about half eleven, and that was nice. In thing. fact, uh, I did that so well that I then overslept the next morning and missed the doctor's appointment that I'd queued for an hour and a half. I which see. was so skillful. About 9.40, the, I'd set my alarm for 7 or something. 9.40, the, the phone rang, the doctor goes, hello, you should be here. And they didn't, they didn't. It was, well, it was very noble of them. Or maybe they didn't know. They didn't say, and you made such a big fuss yesterday about coming in, and I noticed <laughs> you not turned up. Um, he throws sorry, my yeah. knee is that bad. It's taken me that long to walk there. I'm yeah, so I, sorry. I assume you must feel better because you didn't come. Yeah, uh, yeah or sort of, well, I, I, I see it's not stopping you sleeping. <laughs> uh, but no, it's very good. Certainly not keeping you up. <laughs> um, so that was that was fine. And then Wednesday was more. What was Wednesday? More plotting and planning, and for the Edinburgh trip and meetings and stuff, mm. and all the exciting things that you do. Yeah, it wasn't. It, Wednesday was wasn't. I can't think of anything interesting that happened Wednesday. No. Really, but you do, I mean, you. You. I don't want to dwell, but you have been producing comedy for quite some time, haven't you? Uh, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yes. No. Well, I guess so. I mean, I first went up to Edinburgh when I was a student to do shows, and that would have been 1980. Mm. Wow. Uh, which is, is weird when you walk around Edinburgh because you're looking at people thinking, you know, before your parents met. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in Edinburgh. Well, if, it, if it helps, David, I, I was born in 1979, so... No, oh. that's great. Uh, anyway, I must go. It's been delightful. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. I didn't no, so was I. I went out when I was one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you came out with something. Um, but uh, so, what was the first thing you worked on as a producer? Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I, when when you start in radio light entertainment, as it was then, before they sort of there was even the concept of ind indies, you're given a to to look after a long running show that's sort of not hard to produce. So you, I mean, some people manage to make a fist of that, but but you know the idea is that it runs itself to a degree. And I was very lucky because I was put on a show called Beat the Record. Oh, now Beat the Record is a radio was a Radio Two quiz show where 
they played a record and then people rang in and they'd say, oh, is it, is it better me, Mucho? Uh, yes, it is. Well done. Here's your £5 book token. And I'm doing this voice and I'm going to do that sort of voice with bass tip up because the guy who hosted it was a man called Keith Fordyce, which won't mean a light to most people. But if you go on YouTube and look him up, he presented in the 60s a show called Ready, Steady, Go with Kathy McGann. Oh, okay. And regularly interviewed all pop people that everyone... So, you know, he, he, he had Beatles anecdotes because he interviewed them and he told a very, very, very funny story, which made me laugh a lot, which I shall repeat now. Please do. Oh. Which is basically, he was interviewing the Beatles um, in a place called Rediffusion Studios in Wembley, which is actually where I'm from, by chance, uh, which was Limehouse, which is where they now do not X Factor, I think, and uh, or Britain's Got Talent. Anyway, it's still, it's still a studio. It used to be Rediffusion in those days. Mm. And he was leaning against the fire door. This was live. Um, and he leaned against the fire door to talk to the Beatles, at which point he pressed the bar with his back. The door opened. He shot out, fell into the street, <laughs> and the door closed behind him. <laughs> Leaving the Beatles standing there. <laughs> nice. Um, and Keith was, he was so nice. I, I was really like, you know, it was like a sort of dream to work with someone from that era who was absolutely charming. We both laughed a lot because everyone who rang in was very elderly and had either retired or, or yeah. you know, um, and it was always lonely. And it also taught me, uh, you, you, there were, I selected the music as part of the job. You, you never had anything passed about 1965. Because they wouldn't know it. No, they, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be in their ambit. Same as if you, you know, if it was, yeah. I, I would fail at a grime or hardcore pop quiz. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so. Um, I'll just scrap that then. That was the yeah, end. sorry, that's, that's the second half. Yeah. Ruined. <laughs> uh, so, but it meant I just learned a, a vast amount about sort of music of the 40s and 50s of jazz and big band and so on, which, which as a comedy producer is really useful because you can oh, yeah. use it ironically or quasi-ironically or you know it's just good to know so it's a really low impact way of learning a phenomenal amount about music nice. which is nice no, I like that. Uh, so that was the first thing I ever produced and it wasn't funny intentionally anyway no. uh, and then I did I, well I've been writing for a show called Weekending which was sort of the news track of its day and I did a show I was then I guess produced a show called Radioactive which which some radio buffs might remember which was a comedy spoof radio station where Shangus Deaton uh, wrote and starred in that, and, and uh, a fellow podcaster Michael Fenton Stevens, if he's listening, oh, yes. isn't it? Yep. Isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. He does my time capsule, I think. Mm, he does, uh, and it was a brilliantly funny show. I I'd took taken it over. I mean, it had been running for years. It had originally been produced by a guy called Jimmy Mulville, who now runs Hattrick. So that's how we all sort of knew Very each other. Nice. Uh, like and then taken over by a guy called Paul Mayhew Archer, who wrote The Vicar of Dibley. Uh, and is a brilliant, brilliant producer. So I was sort of lucky to be around at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's great when you can. When I, I find it fascinating when people trace back how they, you know, where they got to this point, as it were. And well, you know, well, well the, the, my mentor was a guy called Jeffrey Perkins, who again oh, may yes, mean a lot, yeah. may mean a lot to a lot of people. So he he wrote he he and Angus Deaton wrote and performed Radioactive. That was their mm -hmm. thing. Uh, so that's where I met him, and then but he was he also taught, he was producing Spitting Image, yeah. And so after John Lloyd, he'd taken over from John Lloyd, who created it, uh, and then he got didn't want you know he was going to stop doing it. Um, I didn't know why, but then I soon discovered <laughs> because he then asked me if I wanted to produce it, so uh, so I did, and then wow. discovered why he'd stop producing it because it was absolutely shatteringly, exhaustingly <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Uh, and involved going to Birmingham. Uh, so you're in London four days a week and Birmingham three. That's sorry, I should, that's not why it's <laughs> involved going to Birmingham. So obviously like, that's uh, wow, that's a slapping hideous, <laughs> grotesque thing to have to do for a living. So yeah, no, uh, no, no it, it, yeah, it was Birmingham. complicated. It was a big, complicated, fiddly show, and it was before digital editing. So you had to be really, really smart about how you edited. Anyway, wow. we won't go into that too much. Um, but uh, yeah, so Jeffrey was sort of my mentor because then he was running Hattrick and I was doing a show with Paul Merton uh, for Hattrick for Channel yeah, that, 4. Was that Paul Merton the series? God, yeah, no. Really yeah. Well, well done, I remember yes. that. Uh, I remember that me well. too, just. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that was because I'd, I'd done a radio show with Paul Merton and, uh, and various people wow. before that. It's a sketch show. Something new nice, channel. Right. 
Uh, I'd say uh, it's it's quite the quite the career. It really is. <laughs> it is quite the career, which sadly ended today. Yes, uh, it did. An intemperate well, remark this, about this South Dakota. Really full, uh, we, really we're going to kill it with this podcast. Yeah. Sorry, you got right. till October, I think. This one was being <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. Thank you. I, I love those little stories. I think they're fantastic. Um, so, seeing as nothing happened on Wednesday. Thursday, big day. Well, then. wait. How, what? 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 How is your knee? Oh, yeah. well, oh, well I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell you when we get to Friday. Oh, right. Oh. <laughs> Spence, it's, it's I'm, try- I'm trying to. Build- I can't see. Yeah. So, so I went to Thursday with it. With it. With a, I, I went to Thursday. Uh, I went yeah. to Edinburgh on Thursday. Um, okay. God, base, basic. Uh, uh, prepositions so difficult, aren't they? Um, uh, I went right. to Edinburgh on Thursday with a bad knee, and uh, with as a conjunction. So I don't. I've even got. There's not even a preposition. What's even happening now? Uh, so I flew up. Was right. Oh yeah. No. Ah oh, yes. No. I know what happened Wednesday. Yes. I. I. I nearly got killed. Yes. Oh, I forgot. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. That's, That's what it was. Though. No, because <laughs> because I got a squeezy jet to Edinburgh. That uh, that was leaving at seven in the morning, which I was rather blind about until I realised that meant you had to get to the airport at about five, and I don't live mm. in Gatwick, so I thought I'll go to a Premier Inn. So, oh, that's right. I'd gone to the office for a Zoom. And I had the X-ray. Yes, that's right. Wednesday, I had the X-ray. It was it was I don't insane. The word backwards. Yeah, no, I had the X-ray, which which where I discovered that jeans trousers don't roll up. Yeah, they do not. Because because I went into the thing and I tried rolling them up. Sorry, I went into the thing and I tried rolling them up, uh, and then it wouldn't. So I thought, oh, I'll take my trousers. I don't care. There's only pants for God's sake. I'm not, it's, you know, I'm, I'm inside looking out. You know, I don't care. Uh, so so I was all being rather gung ho, and she was going. The radiologist was going, "Would you like a gown?" And I think she was rather hoping I would. <laughs> but I was going, no, I don't care. So I stand there in my pants doing it. And then, and, but of course, in, in a radiology room, what you don't realise is it's not like a consultant room. People are drifting in and out, mm. which they continue to do. And I was thinking, sorry, everyone. <laughs> sorry, you, you, you didn't sign up for this when you, when you worked for the NHS. You didn't sign up to see me in my pants, but there you go. You've, you, so I had my knee x-rays and that was right. And then, yes, yeah, so I went, so, and then I went to the office and then I had, oh, and then I had to have a two-hour maths lesson um because i had mass lessons so that was quite tiring because i was a bit jet lagged and yes. i wasn't quite i was a bit falling asleep during all this yeah. quantum field theory i was doing so then um so then i thought i'll oh, get something to eat in and before i go to gatwick but everyone was shut so that was shit so i ended up eating at leon's on victoria station so mm-hmm. and they had nothing left because it was about 10 by then oh. so forlorn i'm so useless at these things so then I got to Gatwick and I was staying at the Premier Inn, but it, but it was one that, you, like, you know, like Premier Inns, you drive to them. You don't walk to Premier Inns. That's, oh, that's no. their premise. Uh, but I walked and I couldn't find it and I've got no sense of direction. It was pitch black. So you find yourself going over A roads and bits of grass that aren't really paths. And I think there is a path. There's one little spindly path, which you can see in the light. But not. So I started walking and, and sort of running across A roads. <laughs> like the A23 or something, you know, airport feeder roads yeah. with my bag thinking that this, this can't be right, can it? And then, and then, I, and then I sort of crossed one and then, then there was no path or thing anymore. Is that there, there was a cycle path. Oh. And then three lanes of socking great big A road with lorries thundering by. So I thought, well, this can't be right, but I'm going to push on through, you know, sunk cost fallacy. I'm going to find it. So I'm, Walking on this cycle path at, at about half eleven at night, with Loris shooting by behind me, thinking, on the police report, they're not going to believe this guy had a degree. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> they're going to think twat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I thought, no, I'm going to, and I'm sort of pushing past all this foliage, and 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 I'm, I'm not wearing anything bright or anything. I'm not even, you know, wearing a, you know, a jerkin or a thigh vis thing. Um. And then the cycle path slowly, slowly vanished. Oh, no. And then I thought, okay, yeah, this is where I turn around. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked all the way back and then eventually did find the Premier and very hot, sweaty and thinking, that's that was a stupid thing to do, wasn't it? Uh, how did you even get there? Like, you were walking, but how did you get... To where you were walk- to the cycle path. Like, well, well, you sort of you, uh, you sort of cross path. you cross roundabouts, you know, and you sort of you 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 heft your way through grass that is sort of untended, because it's on a roundabout or a slip, you know, just a kind of V bit of patch where a 
slip road is. I mean, it, I don't know. Don't ask. I don't know. <laughs> I that... woke up and found myself there like Arnie in home? Terminator. I don't know. <laughs> the first part of the journey, what were you doing? Did you well, I left, I left the airport bit, you know, I left arrivals. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Come yeah, and then, and then you know, you, you're sort of spat out into a sort of a concrete thing that turns into a road system okay. with yeah. no cognizance of people on foot. <laughs> so having said very little happened on Wednesday, I, I realised there was un- unintended nudity and, and near death. Yeah, the, um, possibly the best part of the... Oh, and, oh, oh, and some physics. Uh, oh, physics so, right. yeah. So, and then, of course, you, you had to get up at about half four. Mm. Uh, and then refine the path in the light, which was slightly easier and less death ridden. Was it? Was it more obvious? Um, yes, although I have very little sense of direction, so the word oh. obvious is. I mean, it was more present. Yes, I um, see. <laughs> so I could make out landmarks and stuff. <laughs> so I did go. Uh, so I flew to Edinburgh. It's good, and then my meetings, and I had had breakfast finally after about three. Uh, that was all right. Edinburgh was good. Uh, so I, I'm not going to say very much about Edinburgh in a way because sort of like, you know, if I'm talking about what I saw and comedy people, you know. So yes, yeah. no, that's fine. It was a bit unfair, but I was just doing lots of things um, and running around thinking, oh, this hasn't changed at all uh, since 1980 <laughs> and quite possibly since 1880. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I flew back. And what? Oh, yes, because so the train strike. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. So... Yes, I got into Stansted, and I like Stansted because the train goes to Tottenham Hale, which is really easy to get home from, so it's quite spiffy, and it's, you feel like it's a canny move, you know, you feel like you sort of, you know, you've played the system. Yeah. Um, but sadly, Mick Lynch had other ideas, because my knee's still really hurting by now, so I'm, so I'm hefting my way all over Edinburgh, and then hefting my way all through Stansted, get down to the ramp to the station. Oh, no trains. No, no. So... Two things happen at that point. One, you think, oh, that's a nuisance, I'll have to get a bus. And the other thing is you so you go, as will everyone else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so suddenly you're in a third world scenario because you heft your way all the way back and, and you, <laughs> in the distance, you hear this low thrumming noise and you wonder what it is. And, and as you get closer, you start to distinguish people. And what you then realise is it's a three-hour queue Oy. of cross people who who didn't want to go to Stratford or Baker Street or wherever any of these national coaches are going, mm. but wanted to go to their home. Oh. So you eventually stand in a queue and... Oh, yeah, there was... <laughs> I, okay, so, I mean, have you got time? There's this really weird thing happening. have got all okay, the time so, in the world, David. <laughs> so, uh, no, so what, what, um, I had a Kindle. No, I mean, I, I had a tablet. And I could read a book. So this, but by a series of ridiculous coincidences, I was fine for an hour and a half wait. Because no. so what had happened was I, I had a tablet. It's quite new, and I didn't really know how to use it. But I bought it from New York. Um, and on the plane up to Edinburgh, I'd been reading this really good thriller. It's called Vine Street. I mean, it's, it's just a police procedural, but it's very enjoyable, and it's exactly the right thing for a plane journey. And I just got into it. I just got moving. And. Because it was EasyJet on the way up, it had been operated by by a subcontracted operator, so it was a French thing. And I'm going to I'm going to have to read this on my phone. He mm. he made the you know they make these sort of announcements at the end, and when it's in a different language, and uh, and you know they have to just read out from the card, and it's quite perfunctory. Yeah. And he'd said, and it made me laugh. He said uh, the captain. So I tweeted. So he said, as we landed, the captain accidentally asked us to ensure we took all our personal longings with us. Oh. <laughs> which made me laugh yes so so i tweeted oh ha 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 or personal longings with us i was rather hoping to leave them on the plane I took my bag got off the plane and realized i had left some of my personal belongings on the plane for the first time ever in my life wow. and i'd left the book oh. in the thing so it was utter chard not schadenfreude it was utter, utter revenge of the gods i mean that um, is if he'd said belongings you'd have done it but yeah, I, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have tweeted. I wouldn't have faffed around. I'd have plucked the book, you know, from the uh, from the back of the seat in front of me with a faintly smug air, popped it in my bag, and been on my way. So, cool. so then, I, but I really wanted. to, I was just into it, and of course, the thing about Edinburgh is you need a decent book between times. Mm. 
so, so I thought, well, I'll get to Waterstones and see if they, they're bound to have it. But my leg, my knee was really hurting by now. So I hoofed all the way up Princess Street. Now, I've got to get the book, but my knee's hurting, got to get the book. And then they didn't have it. And then I get to the, so on the airport on the way back, right, they'll have it at Smith's in the airport. The airport will have 15 Smith's, which it did. None of them had it. It's the best selling book. Um, so, so I thought, ah, I could download it. I could buy it for a fiver and I download it on my new tablet. So, which I then did. But then I was again fighting for a plug. Mm. No. Uh, and so I thought, I'll buy something. I'll buy something in, in uh, uh, not what's well, a Cafe Nero. They have plugs. So you buy something. You buy something you don't want, some stupid patients. Finally, right, plug it in. None of the plugs work. Uh, oh, yeah. no. So now it's, it's the race again. It's the, it's the battery race. So, uh, so you end up, <laughs> you end up sort of, you, and you find some sort of pillar, which, which has some random pillar, which the, you know, the cleaners use mm. for their machines. And, you, and finally you find a plug that works. So you end up sprawled on the floor. Yeah, um, trying to download a book that you've already bought twice <laughs> in an airport that you don't want to be at, with your knee really hurting. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm very goal orientated. If I am going to read this book somehow, if it kills me, which it broadly speaking did. <laughs> so yeah, so so anyway, so I'm reading that instead, and, and then I get home finally at about sort of two in the morning. So that was Thursday. Wow! Wow! <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very eventful. I mean, because I, so, when, when I first asked you to do this podcast, you were like, well, I don't think I'll have anything to talk about. And uh, I, guess yeah. I, wait, quite a week. I to wait till I get a, you know, a, a week that's um, noteworthy. It's like you've nearly been killed. You've got your knee operation. You've been so, against I'm, electricity. There's a lot of I'm trying to think what, going on. I'm, I'm trying to think what happened Friday. So I went to the doctor. I yes, I finally went. <laughs> and the, no, but the really brilliant thing is, um, I've just done a show on Radio 4. We just did a one-off special called the Co-Brick Society, which is a special edition of the Brick Society with Marcus Brickstock. Hmm. And the idea is each of those shows, he becomes head of a certain thing. And this was commissioned, um, the, the idea is he's in charge of COVID and, right. and, and what we're doing for COVID. Um, brilliantly, it was we put it in really as an idea right at the start of the pandemic. And it's only just gone out. So the, the Radio 4 commissioning cycle is actually longer than a pandemic. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, isn't it? For what it's worth. <laughs> it's wow. Just... But anyway, we did the show and, and we did this joke where, because Marcus's character is, you know, Marcus famously really loves cheese and food and so on. So we did this joke where he's got a load of boffins together and they're planning for what the next pandemic is. And the Marcus, and they're going, oh, maybe it should be monkeypox or maybe it should be a new variant of COVID. And he says, no, gout. I ate a lot of cheese during lockdown, and I think the next pandemic is gout, and that's what we should plan for. And then, and then the joke is uh, anti-goutists can all burst in and do the anti vaccine and say you're in the you're you're in the pay of big toe, which was a very good. <laughs> one, um, anyway, so that's so so that's that. So so the doctor has said, well, from the sounds of it, it could be a bit of arthritis, or it could be nothing, or it could be gout. Oh, so like here, here's the petard. And here's me being hoisted by it. I'm doing a show going, ha, 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 gout. At the same time, I'm suddenly, but it wasn't gout, it turns out. No. I didn't care no. very much. Um, but so, so that was my knee. So that was, and then, of course, we immediately started feeling better and it's perfectly fine now. So, hey, oh, so that was, oh, but I'm now looking what else happened. Something else must have happened Friday apart from me being hoisted by my own comedic okay. petard soon you'll remember that you was abducted by aliens or something that would just it would just come back to you like oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah the pro the whole probe incident yeah. <laughs> uh, no fr <laughs> fr <laughs> no friday was friday i was uh two zooms i was script editing uh with the very fabulous tom neenan because we do a show called the haunting on mm -hmm. radio forum we're just prepping for the fourth series so uh, we were doing a long Zoom script edit, and we were on Zoom because of the train strike. We weren't going to get to the office, um, so that was earlier. That's very. That's sort of the, the thing I tell you about work is the most prosaic thing of all. I did. I had a script editing session on Zoom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasn't any kill. Didn't have an exploding knee. Wasn't learning math. Nothing no. very exciting. So, but it was very enjoyable and lovely because I love script editing. I love working with Tom. Yes. Uh, and then I had some more Zooms. It and indicates that it's safer for you if you don't go out. Yeah, frankly, I should just say embedded in sort of omnidirectional cushioning jelly, shouldn't I, really? <laughs> um, and then I i don't think very much else happened Friday, except I was just biffing on with Better Call Saul in the evening. Yeah. Um, because yeah. I'm near the end, so don't tell me what happens. If well, you know. I don't know what happens. I, 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 haven't oh, been, I haven't been watching it, no. And I um, I'm I one of those people 
that doesn't get on the um, hype train or any sort of thing like that. So if someone's saying, you've got to see this, I'm less, <laughs> I'm less likely to watch it. He's very resistant. I, yeah. I don't, I don't sort of, yeah, I don't. I, 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 do, I have watched box sets over the years. I started, actually, it's quite because I started because a long time ago, um, I was talking to somebody who was doing some music for a show I was doing, a guy called Pete Bakey, who used to be oh, doing yes. music for Absolutely. Yeah. Lovely Pete. And he was sort of saying, for this particular thing, he said, well, it should be something like the music for 24. And I said, what's that? He said, oh, 24, it's, it's a box set. It's a, you know, it's a thriller with Chief Sutherland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And I said, and I said, what's a box set? <laughs> because this was very early day and I, you know because the concept of that sort of the whole hbo thing it was really new i mean that was one of the early ones yeah right. so i watched it and was and and thought oh this is great i really liked it and it was hooked but i thought well, i must i'm not going to do that again and anyway I, at that point i was working with milton jones as i do and we were producing whatever it was series one of thanks a lot milton jones or something and I, we were chatting about all this because we were looking for things to spoof and i said well i said it was great but i'm never doing that again because you get hooked and you can't stop and i don't have the time mm. so for, and it was 24 series one so i'm not going to embark on series two because it'll just and at the end of the series he then bought me a present he bought me the box set of 24 series three <laughs> which was a very good joke I think. um so so yeah but so i, I do watch them from time to time well like the wire and um so i was watching better call Saul. yeah and I'm no, I, did, I, do, I mean I, 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 box sets i do binge comedy box sets and things like that stuff but there's not i can't even think what the last thing i watched drama wise like a big series i did watch this is gonna hurt um, the foresight watch. saga in the 90s no, in I, didn't the watch 70s. That, no. no I didn't, didn't grip me um yeah no, I think the, it was the lumiere one. brothers their no, train approaching no, a station no, it didn't no. grip me no <laughs> um, <laughs> it didn't grip me that one. so yeah i don't no, i don't no. my um, favorite incidentally ties in with earlier is deadwood that was my favorite Oh well, yes, no, that makes that makes total sense. Um, or a stop motion animation of the construction of Rushmore. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, Rushmore is a film I've no intention of seeing. Is that Wes Anderson? Uh, yes, it is. Rushmore. Yeah. I sort of I keep watching his films and then going, mm, yeah, if, if, yeah, sure, yeah. if you want, yeah. yeah, okay, that character's got a got a, got a funny beard, okay. Yeah, oh, this character yeah. speaks in that accent. If, if you like, I don't know why. I, th- I think the only one I've really thoroughly actually enjoyed was Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah, that was that actually. Was, I like that one. That was silly. That, that, that was, was good. That was over the top, and Ray Fiennes was playing a blinder on that one. Yeah, um, no, I like that. And that had Tilda Swinton in it very briefly. Yes, because she has to be in everything by law. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But she was I, was, I, was, I, 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 I have to say, I was at university at the same time as her, and she was in all the student plays. And in the same was. university? Uh, yeah, that <laughs> no, wasn't gate crashing. It was. <laughs> she goes around uh, all and, the universities. Just... Yeah, I was just hovering around you. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. on the off um, until the court order. No, I, I mean, she she was in a lot of the plays, and I was sort of in the play comedy kind of world, so you saw everything. And and she was then. You just you went, oh, she's going to be famous. Yeah, 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 because she was just brilliant and stuff. Yeah, so she is, she is great. Um, and there was another bloke. No, I'm not the bloke. I mean, there was there was there was another person who was a bloke, uh, who was also, uh, you know, thought, oh, he's terribly good, isn't he? I wonder if he'll become anything. And he was Simon Russell Beale. Oh yes, so he, he so certainly did. Yeah, okay, well, yeah. fair play. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so yes, Friday finished without <laughs> any catastrophes, uh, and then we're nearly we're nearly now. I tell you, uh, uh, Saturday's a blur. Now, I'm looking at my diary because I'm uh, such as it is. Because I must have done something on you, Saturday. You, you mean yesterday, yeah? Yeah. Well, like, well, this this story of my life. It's yes, <laughs> yesterday's gone. Um, <laughs> actually, that's the lyric from Merrily. We roll along, isn't it? I think yesterday's it is, gone. Yeah. See the pretty countryside. Sorry, it was a random <laughs> Sondheim thought. Hang on, what's the date? <laughs> Where are we? What's even happening? <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, August twentieth, Saturday. Oh yeah, what did I? Do? Oh, I know what I did. Yes, um, I wrote emails from very early in the morning. Hmm. I wrote a lot of emails. Uh, must have done something else. <laughs> Did I Any go nice to a bookshop? <laughs> I'm just picturing you like, writing emails early in the morning. Did you, you send got... them? Yeah, you just. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something you forget, isn't there? <laughs> but uh, I'm just picturing you doing like six emails, then just freezing and comatosing in front of yeah. the monitor. I just power yeah. down, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'll be. 
I'll be reanimated. No, I can't remember. I mean, I, th- I think the rest of the... I mean, it probably involved hummus, because most days do. Mm. Um, no, I think I just... Oh, well, I did the listener crossword. Uh, okay. Yep. Which was fiddly this time, because it was a, a numerical one. Did you win? Uh, <laughs> I did I did solve it, but not till about two in the morning. <laughs> they take a long time. Yes, that's what I was doing. I was doing a number puzzle till about two in the morning. Ah. Yes, I remember now. I mean, that quite quite impressive. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it would have been more impressive if I said I'd finished it by three in the afternoon. Yes, uh, but no, two. Sadly. I mean, uh, to be honest, if, if it was me, I would still be working on it. I, 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 yeah, I'd, oh. numbers are not my strong point, David. No, uh, well, turns out <laughs> <laughs> evidence would now suggest. Um, and then, uh, oh, yeah, no, and this, today, actually, that, no, sort of, I got up and I went to Waitrose and I was, uh, no, Mark's to do some, I think, and I was that guy, uh, and I must explain, I was, I was that prick. Mm. So I've, I've, got, I've got a thing with all, uh, self-service checkouts at, at, at supermarkets where I, I, I like to not use them. Okay. My, my logic being that, that why, why should I work for my food? I'm... <laughs> I'm paying for it. And I regard finding the little scanny thing and orienting the food to the right, you know, and up to the thing. That, that, to me, that's work. That's because when normally when you're at the till, that's, that's like sort of crossword time. Mm-hmm. While somebody else works, is paid by the store, it's, that's a job, and then you leave with the food you have bought mm-hmm. for the fair price. Yeah, yeah. That's my algorithm anyway. Um, if, I, if I'm asked to do mechanical work between times, then there should be a discount. So... Um, so I was in Marks and I said to the, uh, I, I was that guy cause I do what I usually do, which is say, will you do it for me? Mm-hmm. Um, cause some, sometimes I do it and pretend to cock up. So they have to do the rest of it. Mm-hmm. But occasionally I go, I go the whole hog and just sort of put the shopping down and go, thank Ta-da. you. Would, would you care to sell me these viands? <laughs> Good day. Would you care to sell me this produce? I need uh, the experience. I need the full shop experience. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 the, the the sort of she gave me a slight eye but she was very nice about it and she put it all through and in fact i felt mildly justified because at least three of the items were called for assistance uh, things right yeah, yeah. you know because it was like paracetamol or t- and a magazine or something you know so that sounded what terrible magazine? <laughs> yeah, the magazine called for assistance. no it wasn't i get no listen i get my <laughs> pedophiles <laughs> weekly delivered i my point from marks and space <laughs> No, it was it was just because it was like one of these things that cost over a five or so. I don't know why. I don't know what their policy is. Maybe it's a political maybe, thing. Maybe, yeah, maybe they go, "Oh, he's bought the new statesman, right? Lights, lights, yeah. flash, yeah. in head office." So, so out of about, I, I would say something like forty percent of the objects required her to have come over anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So actually, if you factor in her travel time there and back, it was probably. She actually probably saved wear and tear by yeah. doing it all ab initio. She, yeah, she should be thanking you. She really should. That's that was very much my point. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. And as I'm as I said to her. Um, yeah, you should be thanking me. You should be thanking me. People at the other tills waiting for her to come and approve their items. <laughs> yeah, there is that <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But, but like I, I did preface this by saying I was that guy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, so it all goes all right. Yeah. And then um, then I ask for a receipt, and the, and the, and the, she presses the thing, and the machine goes but were clank and then stops and another mm. screen comes up so it goes oh sorry i'll just and then and then you uh, you know the experience where it's a really friendly screen and it's sort of showing you bananas and you put through banana and then when it goes wrong it suddenly becomes a jumble of cack oh yes yeah, yeah it's like the matrix you know it's yeah. sort of suddenly it's it's store login and and thing and um so she was sort of weaving her way through all that it's quite impressive like you know she was sort of doing like tom cruise in uh, minority <laughs> report you know she's washing her handle over thing but there's no receipt so so now i'm thinking right i'm going to go long on this i'm going to double down on this i'm going to want this receipt yeah yeah okay because yeah. because now i've committed that's fair yep. enough. So, yep. I mean, know what um, you're like when you're committed. <laughs> yeah well you've already discovered that i i don't i don't back down until yep. the cycle path ends <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I'm really I'm learning a lot about myself in this, and it's all and it's all bad. <laughs> turns out, um, so so then she can't do it. So then she has to call uh, the uh, another person over. So now I'm using up all the supermarket help juices, as it were. I've, I've you know I've, I'm monopolizing all the, and she can't do it. And then and then she she goes to another screen. So now I'm using two tills as well, mm. and and there's an awful lot of jiggery poker in there. And finally, this thing burps out. <laughs> and I look at it and oh she's oh no at one point she said oh I was such a prick because she says can you remember what it, how, what, what it was for and I said well no b- 
because I don't have the receipt. Oh. Which is fine in a comedy routine, but in real life is, is a dick move. Oh, yes, right? that's a dick move. I mean, I'm not wrong, am I? I was horrible. No, I mean, it wasn't unpleasant. Was... No. Did, you um, have a, did you have a smile on your face as you said it? Well, no, I, I didn't. I, I, I was quite, because, I, because there's a com- the comedy producer part of me was going, don't, don't go all in on this. No, no. You know, if, 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 you were, if you were a male stand-up sitcom, you would give it the full Jack D or something, but don't just be. Um, but um, so then she hands me the receipt and I say, oh, but this, but then she, she eventually does it after a lot of huffing and puffing and steam coming out of the back of it and cranks turning. And, stuff. and and then I said, but this isn't what I spent. This doesn't have the magazine, which is why I need the receipt, because it's tax deductible. Uh-huh. Okay, this now we've come, now we've come to the now heart I of it. Get now, it. We, now, now, now we, we know. Get it. Yes. Now we know. So, uh, so, so, so she can't do it. I said, but I, I said I don't want to steal the magazine. And no. if you know, it may have got through my card. It may not. Have. If it has, that's fine. But then I need the receipt. If it hasn't, I'm going to be stealing it, and I don't want to be stealing it because I'm that guy. But I'm not that. Yeah, I, I'm not that that guy. No, no, no. Um, so she goes, okay. Well, uh, fine. I'll, I'll have to go. Do it. It'll take me about ten minutes. By which time, okay, we we this is set for one o'clock. It's quarter to one. Yeah. And she says it'll take about 10 minutes. So, so being the producer, I, I, I subdivide time into like sort of picoseconds. Right. So I know if it's 10 minutes, I can get up, back up the hill, shove the stuff in the fridge, hurtle up here, get the mic set up and be ready. <laughs> so I commit. So I go, okay, that's fine. And, and I think, I realise now I, I called her bluff. Oh. Because she was thinking he won't want to wait for 10 minutes. Yeah. But she doesn't know me. No. Because uh, I've got stuff to read, other magazines from previous magazine <laughs> short interactions in my pocket. Because I never go out with anything to read, um, as you know from the plane thing. Yeah. So, so I'm quite consistent in my psychology. I will stand there reading for as long as it takes. Um, so, so off she, off she huffs, um, and I'm doing the crossword in in the Observer, and it's all very pleasant. And then it comes back, and then and there it is, and it's all printed out, and I escape. And so, so now I try and ameliorate it by saying voluble thank yous, but they're not having it. Mm. No, no, so no. I'm, I'm trying to sort of pretend. No, I'm a nice guy. So, oh, thank you so much. Those, and they're just going. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yep. You see, I used to work in retail for 15 years. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so so sorry. Put it like this: I wouldn't order soup from that store now. No, no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. <laughs> because because I think many organic materials would go into it. We're going to probably spit in them as well. Um, I I always use the self service one, but then then again, I think it's because of the um, experience I've built up in my in the workplace um, makes me able to do it. Um, but you instinctively know where the barcodes are. I instinctively are. know where the barcodes are. I know yeah. how to do it. I know how to work. I know how to pack. I know everything. I can do it. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but I mean, I the, do it. Um, the thing that gets me is I bought an energy drink the other day well you've only got yourself to blame frankly yeah i know <laughs> but they got that uh age restriction on that which is you know you have to be over 25 oh um, yeah 25 yeah, yeah yeah 25 for energy drink. and um so yeah the thing came up saying uh so, someone's going to come over blah, blah blah worded better than that i mean that's that's rubbish <laughs> um but uh, yeah someone came over and there was two options that came up one yes over 25 ID shown, and the other one is yes, clearly over twenty five. Clearly over twenty five. Well, clearly, that, over I know, 25. but it, it doesn't make you feel good, does it? It's like I mean, oh. I would be annoyed if they did that with me, even though I'm like thirteen years over twenty five. And, 25, and he, he didn't even look at me. I don't think he even looked at me. I think he just sort of went. Mm. It's probably grey in your beard. Yeah, probably. Are they flex? Are they, t- are they those telltale flex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's, it's yeah. starting to my hair now. And, you know, I, I quite, I'm embracing it, you know, David. I, I really am. I like <laughs> embracing it. your clearly over 25-ness. Yes, yeah. yeah. Apart from when it's pointed out to me by some person who's clearly not over 25. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there was, I, I read, there was a funny, a nice thing on Twitter the other day. This is someone else's experience, but it made me laugh, where they, they were at the till and they'd bought a sandwich and some crisps. Uh, this woman had posted this on con- uh, confession thing, and the lad on the tiller said, um, "Would you like to go for a drink?" Hmm. And she went, "Oh, I, sorry, I, I'm married. I couldn't possibly." Said, "No, no. Would you like to go for a drink? It's a meal deal." <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was very, very <laughs> splendid. Oh no! <laughs> so, so anyway, so I, so I hoofed it up the hill. 
with with sort of conflicted righteousness and shame uh, battling in my head. Landed here, found a stack of books to stick the mic on, and that has brought us up to, literally up to the present time. I, do you know? I, um, I think this is the first one we've had where people have actually up gone the up to yeah. the minute. That's <laughs> blow, that. blow by blow details of my utter dickery. I love it. So, is your stuff still in the waitress or MS bag in the fridge then? Uh, no. Oh no, it's all uh, no. I, I did high speed fridge <laughs> distribution. <you. laughs> yeah, no, it's all it's all very. Um, yeah, but it's all very organised. There's a lot. All the coleslaws are all organised. I, I, I won't eat them in the right order, but no, they are. <laughs> all the coleslaws. All the coleslaws. How many did you get? Or is it coal? Oh. All the coles law? No, coles law. Col- coles law. Uh, oh, no, well, no, I didn't. I, I I got what I what I what I like to call backup coles law. Uh, <clears throat> in case the main coles coles law goes wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you know, after my plane experience, it's just, um, back up coleslaw and, doesn't sound right. <laughs> no, actually, that sounds like something, something you're going to for. Yeah. Worse oh. than gout. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid you've got back up coleslaw. Uh, oh, that does yeah. remind me of the joke, oh, the very funny God. joke. It makes me laugh a lot. The the guy with the glass eye, and he he swallows it mm. one day accidentally, and so the, he has to go to the doctor, and the, and the, has, and the, so he has to go to a proctologist because they can't sort of get it out. So the, the proctologist sticks the sort of camera uh, up his backside and looks at the lens and then comes back up and goes, you don't trust me, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Which I love, love it. Anyway. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it sounds like your week has been exciting stupid. enough, <laughs> exciting enough to be on the pod and stupid enough, yeah. Uh, if you were to rate this week out of a score of whatever, what would you rate it? Oh, it's mixed. It's, mm. it's very it's very mixed like if i'm doing a show or something you're so focused and then and then you sort of do it and then you go to the pub and it's lovely so that's always so you always leave it sort of with a 10 out of 10 because it's you know the show's been great and then you go to the pub and that's delightful and all the difficulty before yeah um at uh um so uh, whereas this is just it's, it's been so i don't know it's so bitty i just, it's i mean i mean look there's backup coleslaw in the fr- fridge so 10 out of 10 oh yeah okay that's fair you enough know. no that is fair say. enough um, so, Ultimately, a win. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, is there anything you would like to uh, promote or get off your chest or confess to or anything? Um, no, I mean, I think there's there's been an extraordinarily revealing process of of just what kind of a person I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a person who will walk up a motorway in the dark. Yeah. Um, rather than get a cab to a premiere in. Yeah. We'll stand for 15 minutes in a supermarket while two different operatives have to print out a receipt I don't really need. <laughs> yep. Uh, and we'll sprawl on an airport floor to get just enough electricity to continue reading the book. I mean, I've, I've got images of you, when you the way you describe <laughs> that, the, my image is, is your face down. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, actually, oh, no, I, no, it was worse. I know what was worse about that. Sorry, so to cyber um, was... There was a lady, well, it was a woman, uh, well, she's in her early 20s, cl- clearly under 25. Right. Mm, thank you. Mm. Um, American woman who was, who was sit, perched on by the plug, having a massive beef into her phone to her friend about how her hotel room had been awful and she got in and the bath was set. And it was a blow by blow account of how terrible this hotel room was. Mm. Uh, and, that, and the management and the hoo ha. And it was a long, long thing. And I did this terrible thing of just going, sitting right down. So sort of I'm really sorry. I, can I, do you mind if I use this plug? And she was just having this really not intimate conversation, but kind of. And I and I just sort of thought, well, no, I'm, I'm going to sit here. I, I don't care. And she was so cross mm. because, but I could, well, you don't own the airport, and you've stuck yeah. your us by the plug. What am I supposed to do? So you laid no, down in front. Enough. You laid down in front of her. Yeah. And oh actually no, I did a terrible thing at Foils the other day. Is there time for me to tell you this? No, I mean it's it's just reminding me. Again. <laughs> it's just it's just reminding me of another terrible book piece oh. of book behaviour. It's like on my... <laughs> Oh my god. So I really like Foil the cafe on the sixth floor of Foils in in uh Tonical Road. Uh, not in Tonka Road, uh, Regent Street. Well, whatever it is. No, not Regent Street. Charing Cross Road. What am I like? Um, so I bought the direction book. thing is going on again. Is it? Yeah, so I know, hopeless. Yeah, it's in Argyle share. No, I don't know. Um, so I thought, brilliant. I, I bought a load of books. Um, again, a pattern is forming, other different books. Uh, and I thought, I'll go and have a sandwich. That'll be nice. 
Um, but obviously bookshops now, book, book, bookshop cafes now are peopled by people working on their laptops. Yeah. A small percentage of which are actually also eating and a smaller percentage of which are actually still eating as opposed to finished eating an hour ago, but are using it as a fig leaf to hold the table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see where I'm going with this. So I, I so do, merge yeah. in my tray, sandwich, coffee, lovely. And there's no room except, you know, individuals working at two person tables. So the fine, I'll sit down opposite somebody working on their laptop and it's their problem, not mine. I don't care. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the radiologist's pants all over again. It's their problem. Right? So, I wasn't in my pants. Sorry. Well, I mean, I was, but I had trousers over them. Sorry, just oh, yeah, for yeah, clarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't in foils. Nice. Just in pants. Yeah. That's, that was last week. Um, so I was polite and I just said, oh, so is anyone else sitting here? Do you mind if I, you know, as a, as a sort of token thing? Mm-hmm. And she said, oh, I'm waiting for someone. Mm. Yeah. So my that guy gene kicked in again. Mm-hmm. So instead of going, oh, no, fine, sorry. I went, well, when they come, I'll leave. Yeah. <gasps> No, and I sat do. down no, as, as elbowily and noisily and plastic baggily as I could. And you could tell she was on the verge of going, but she sort of couldn't quite because, of course, she was fat in the wrong. Yeah. Because she, was, she had no sandwiches. She was just working at the table. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. effectively, my, my logic is part of what you're paying for the food is ground rent. Yeah. So, yes. Yes. Well, so... <laughs> I'm so awful. I can't believe this. Burn this tape. No, um, no, no, no. no, no. I'm, I'm going to distribute it everywhere. So, I, so I sat down <laughs> and, and ate my sandwich. Like create news stories that are bad as well. <laughs> I mean, I was quite polite. I, I didn't eat the sandwich messily or anything. Or no more, no more than usual. I mean, I was, you know, I was quite. Her. Yeah, I mean, I was, yeah, no. I, was, I thought I was actually quite cautious. I was rather sort of. I, I kept the sort of sphere of quite tight. Mm. Um, could, and like, and she, at one point, she made a phone call. You know, which was very much long lines, which clearly was this prick sat opposite me, get to her as soon as you can. Because I was also wondering, I was calling her bluff because I was wondering if there was anyone there at all. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I sort of finished the sandwich, finished my drink, read for a bit. And just as I was on the point of leaving, this person arrived. So which was great because I'd I'd won. A, I'd won. I'd proved my point. (laughs) I'd had a very nice lunch. Mm-hmm. I'd annoyed, I, I'd punished her <laughs> for her presumption in hogging a seat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then, best of all, as soon as the bloke turned up, I was literally ready to go yeah. at that very second. So yeah. he turned up and I went, oh, there you are. Thank you very much. Goodbye. You're right. Lovely meeting you. Oh. Yeah. God, I'm bad. Wow. wow. Isn't that terrible? You are that guy. I really am. Oh. <laughs> no, I would have done the same in that. In that, I would, no. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, but I mean, the word I think I'm looking for is is malice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I I maliciously shared a table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, oh dear. I'm not making this awkward. You are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I called uh, her bluff. Oh, oh dear. Well, do you know what? It, I, 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 I'll send you the invoice for this therapy session. It'll be fine. Actually, that being said, I would also, even though I'd be the person who would sit there, I'm I'm the person who would indicate you could join me at my table. Yeah. If I saw someone looking around, I would. Well, I, I would. I wouldn't have the chutzpah to so even make it an issue if I wasn't eating there. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. no. maybe. No, I, anyway. I. I think I think you did the right thing there. I think I think you. <laughs> You're all, you're right. You're not you're not that guy. You're you're that guy. You know, <laughs> the other guy. So, um, I mean, wouldn't it be funny if she'd played the game back and just started talking to you a bit, like deliberately trying to weird you out, and then you'd have been even more adamant to stay there because oh oh well, no talking of which. No, I did this the other day. Sorry, yes, I've just re- something. <laughs> I just remembered something even worse. Pour your soul out. Come on, just pour your soul out. What so other I was on the forty. Have you done to people this <laughs> week? No, so I was on the forty-one, and and I I used to be quite pricky about which mixed with priggish and pricky and a prick about people talking on their mobiles on the on the bus. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I kind of realised after a while. Well, I realised don't be a dick. But then I also realised, you know, not everyone has an office as it were, not everyone has an office. No, but not everyone can talk on their phones at work. You know, their employers might not let them. Yeah. They might be they're having to arrange, you know, they might be working multiple jobs. It might be the only time between the job that they can talk to their landlord or their, or they might, you know, trying to get the electrician out or sorting out their kids' childcare or, you know, any, so I sort of 
completely back down from being <laughs> about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, often people aren't speaking English, so you've no idea. Mm. Anyway, so it's not like you can go, oh, that's a stupid conversation. I, you know, she's, I wish she so, but anyway, so, but I was on the 41. Um, but what, and, and this lady was talking very, very loudly, and I've no idea what the conversation was about, but it was sort of notably loud and notably obtrusive. And she was also not, she was talking, you know, you know, when people talk, use a telephone properly yeah. by holding it up to their ear and then speaking into the receiver, yeah. or they have it on their lap and just bellow because right. yeah, right. it's all on speaker. And I think that's obviously unforgivable. Yes. Yeah. So yes. after a while, I thought, oh, no, okay, I'm irritated. So I start, I thought, I know, I'll whistle. <laughs> I'll start to whistle a little, a merry tune. <laughs> and and then I thought, no, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to sing a patter song from Gilbert and Sullivan. <laughs> so I started to sing My Eyes Are Fully Open to My Awful Situation from Ruddy Gore. Wow. But, but you, you pitch the level so that no one else on the bus can really hear. Uh-huh. But from her point of view, you could be mad. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, from my point of view, I could be mad. Now. But also, I was quite, I was quite enjoying it. But and also, it's intensely irritating. I mean, I'm a huge Gibbon Sullivan fan, but but I defer to no one in my knowledge of how irritating it is to well, anyone. Give who us isn't. a blast. Um, you know. I wanna... <laughs> no, actually, I've got another story about my eyes are fully open to my awful situation because I sang that during an eye operation. Um, but no, but that's a different thing. No, so uh, I will tell you about. Anyway, so so. <laughs> <laughs> so I so I was singing my eyes fully open to my awful situation. I should go I want to order again, and it's really annoying. I mean, even that was annoying, right? And and she after and then she she but she sorry hit the mic, but she she carried on. Although I could f- sense an eye roll, possibly the same eye roll as the foils lady and the Marks and Spencers till <laughs> operative yeah, yeah. Yep. patterns forming. But she didn't stop, so I then moved on to Rising Early in the Morning, We Proceed to Light the Fire from the Gondoliers, and I got about half a verse into that, and she hung up. <laughs> but I then... Was, see, I was just hoping you'd get the whole bus involved, that was all. No, because you do it at a level where, where no one else can hear, and she's not quite sure. Mm. Um, and then, and, But also, I was doing a Sudoku at the time. Oh, yeah. Because I know it so well. I did, so it was like, is he really making those noises? Because he's... He, apparently he's doing something else. And then I carried on exactly to the point where I left the bus, at which point I stopped dead and then got off the bus as a kind of, yeah, no, I was doing it, and it's entirely your fault. Yeah. 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 So so that was reason. No, but the other time I was doing it, about a few years ago, sorry, have we got time for this? So it's, it's not a mat. <laughs> <laughs> I had an eye operation. I had, um, uh, I had cataracts, and so what they do is they replace... Uh, they replace the lens, and it's brilliant because yeah. you can see. I've been short sighted my whole life, uh, and and they replace it with a fixed lens, length, length, fixed focal length lens made of plastic, which means you can you don't need glasses anymore except for reading, where you have to have a reading pen. You might notice, you might not, but anyway. But it's a local anaesthetic. Mm-hmm. You have to be awake, mm-hmm. so and it just drops, yeah. and there's no pain or anything. You don't see anything or anything. You're just lying there, but it's unnerving. Yeah. Of course, yes. Let's not pretend. It is unnerving. Mm. So, Lina, so because you, you, you mustn't, you know, they've got your eye open. You, you, they hold your eye open and they put drops in all the time. But obviously, you know, you're, you're evolutionarily designed to blink every eight yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. And you can't. Yeah. But that's okay. You don't need to because of the water drops. But you have to keep telling your brain and you have to keep calming yourself down. So I thought, I know, I'll, I'll sing. Mm-hmm. I'll hum to myself. Mm-hmm. So at which point, <laughs> the surgeon's biffing away. And I start singing, my eyes are fully open to my awful situation. I shall go on to Rondo and make him an oration. I shall tell him I've forgotten why I've got more of a sense. I do hope you're not looking around like that. And, <laughs> and, and the surgeon, so the lyrics are, my eyes are fully open to my awful situation. I shall go on to Rondo and oh, make nice. him an oration. And the surgeon, after all, goes, are you singing? <laughs> and I go, yeah, yeah. I said, would, would you mind not? <laughs> <laughs> But I still claim singing my eyes are fully open to my awful situation during an eye operation is class. That's spot on. Is that class? No, I think that is, yeah. Does I'm that amazing. ameliorate all the other poor yeah, behaviours yeah. I've exhibited today? Yeah, no, that's amazing. So, um, anyway. Why did they ask you to stop? That's like a coping mechanism, isn't it? Like distracting yourself. Well, yeah, but that's like the old joke, isn't it, to the person who, you know, the, the person who goes to to see the doctor and, and, and he's got something wrong with his genitals and... and, and, and but... Uh, and, and she says, mm, "This is this is quite a problem. This is quite a problem because because he's he's been 
you know, overindulging, shall we say. Right. And after a while she says, I'm afraid I'm going to have to, I think you are going to have to stop masturbating. He goes, why? She says, well, I'm trying to examine you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. So, so unacceptable coping mechanisms. We've, we've learned two today. I mean, you could, so yeah, it definitely could have been worse than singing, couldn't it? By the sounds of it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Eye operation, well. Well, it could have been having a sandwich or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Or you could be masturbating. Um, yeah. <laughs> please, stop. yeah. <laughs> please stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. Or, or at the very least, let me cover it up with a kind of tent of gowns. You want a gown? <laughs> yeah. We've heard about your behavior in radiology. <laughs> Terror, I've had proceed through, by the way. Um, <laughs> your wife. Well, it won't help if I've got a cataract. It won't make any difference. <laughs> Um, yeah, so your week has been quite as <laughs> fruity, actually. Yeah, quite eventful. Um, is it, so, was there anything you wanted to promote apart from the fact that you're worried about your... being perceived as a bad person? <laughs> uh, no, no. I mean, there's, uh, it's, I, I, if anyone listens to any of our shows on Radio Four, you can buy them all. Is that what we mean by promoting? Can yeah, I plug it? Is that plugging? Yeah. Buy your shows. Every, buy, every, every single show we've ever made. You can buy on Amazon buy or on iTunes and enjoy enjoy them all, all for of them. money. And then the writers and the artists get paid. Yeah, so yeah, if yeah. you want John Finmore or Milton Jones or Marcus Brigstock or Tom Neenan or uh, Rebecca Front or any of these people to get a tiny, tiny portions of a millionth of a penny, yep. um, download them on iTunes. And there we are. That's well, let's a nice do thing. that then. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much, David. It's been a, it's been a real, real joy talking to you. Um, Pleasure. Uh, uh, Emmy, anything to add? No, no, I think we've covered a lot. Good, good. <laughs> so my thanks to David Tyler, my thanks to Emmy Weber, I've been Alex Sivright, and that was, that was the week, that was, was it. Goodbye. Well, what's the way? Good luck on picking me up a slice. Hey, don't forget to stop by the bodega and pick me up some bread. Schwitzing over here, turn on the aircon. Uh... Shut up your face. Enjoy. What do you mean I missed the whole episode? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs>